Everyone knows the story of King Kong. Frank Zappa sums it up best when he says, It's a story about a large electric gorilla marooned on an island somewhere in the middle of the ocean, leading a happy, banana-fed existence until one day some very shrewd Americans discover that he's happening on a cosmic giant gorilla level. So they figure they're going to get themselves together on a boat, go to the place where the gorilla is, and snatch him right up. The subsequent sequels, spin-offs, remakes, and rip-offs that spawned from the original 1933 film vary in quality, but cannot be denied of their entertainment value. That is, unless you subject yourself to the previously unreleased parody of Giant 8 movies, Queen Kong. Right around the same time in 1976, when the first King Kong remake was about to be released, Queen Kong had been shot simultaneously in Britain, but when the producer of King caught wind of this, he sought legal action, successfully preventing a theatrical release for Queen in countries other than Italy, Germany, and Japan. Over 25 years later, Retro Media released the film on DVD. Ironically, however, it still has not been officially released in Great Britain. If anything, film fans across the pond should consider themselves lucky that they don't have immediate access to this rancid ridicule of giant gorilla movies. Chock full of eye-rolling sight gags, the film follows a female director this time out, searching for the perfect male lead to star in her monster movie. Somewhere there must be a man. Gentle, yet brave enough to face whatever the future holds in store. Queen Cauldron Kong. That's the name of the movie, Kong. Queen Kong. Gender role reversals play an important part in this film, which is revealed during the opening credits when prominently showcasing Ray Fay, a hilarious send-up of the original King Kong's leading lady, Fay Ray. Ray Fay, a long-haired London vagabond who looks more like Christopher Guest in Spinal Tap than a leading man in a monster movie, catches the attention of the aforementioned female filmmaker when he flashes his crooked British mug at her for four and a half minutes. <laughs> Unable to afford a poster for the classic King Kong film, This is the original reproduction. Ray stages an accident outside of a memorabilia gift shop and is able to swipe the poster when his ruse goes according to plan. Milk, sugar. Apparently in London, instead of a first aid kit, they just bring out tea. His cunning thievish antics have landed Ray the role of a lifetime, although unaware he was auditioning for a movie. After being drugged and dragged aboard the director's private boat, they prepare to set sail toward the jungle. It's pretty easy to kidnap someone when they're made up entirely of a sack filled with potatoes. Burn your bra, burn your panties, call your mom, call your aunties and ship off on the liberated lady. Before embarking on their journey, the ship's crew break out in a song and dance number regarding women's liberation, but their message is undercut by lingering camera shots of bikini-clad bear midriffs. Kong, 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 Kong. Kong, 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 Kong. They keep saying, Kong, 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 Kong. What the hell did the original script for this scene look like? The word Kong typed out 400 times? Green Kong! Green Kong! Alright, thank you for coming in. Here's a sample of the script from Queen Kong that you're going to be reading for us today. Yeah, this is just the word Kong written 400 times. Green Kong! Green Kong! The screenwriters must have also collaborated with the lyricist responsible for the opening credits theme song. Kong, 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 Kong! Queen, 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 Kong! King Kong isn't the only film satirized in this movie because The Exorcist also falls prey to the ripe wit of the writer's script. They just spat green pea soup out of their mouths! For good measure, Jaws is too thrown into the mix as a mockery is made of John Williams' iconic score. Maybe if you do something, little dance, native in style, it will be alright. Yeah? Hmm. Try it. No, no. Maybe at the uh, local pub, but certainly not at the Hilton. We arrive on the island of Lazanga, where they do the conga, and beat you over the head with unfunny, repetitive jokes. Mm. Make your... make your toilet 
as clean as your mouth. This isn't funny. The crew of the liberated lady then stumble upon a lackluster ritualistic offering to the island's god. Yeah. But when the natives notice, they can't help but be drawn to raise a luring charm. Unga, bunga, banga, wanga. Who wrote this dialogue? Sounds like the early stages of a Ted Nugent song. What were the actors thinking when they had to say these lines? Green Kong! Green Kong! Okay, I'm sorry about that. Um, here's some revised lines. Try those. Unga bunga, wingo tingo, lunga munga. I'm not reading this crap. Green Kong! During the middle of the night, it turns out that not only is Ray a very easy person to kidnap, but is also the most laid-back kidnap victim ever. All girls on deck! Man missing! Find Ray! Wait, I thought they burned their bras and panties. They lied to us through song! Ah, this must be the conga that they do in Lazanga. Queen Kong is lured out from the jungle for her birthday party celebration, but I'm not really sure why the natives chose to stick Ray inside of a big birthday cake instead of a giant loaf of banana bread. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. No birthday party for a giant gorilla would be complete though without a Tyrannosaurus Rex pinata presumably stuffed with bananas. <laughs> Are there pads on the island big enough for Queen Kong when her cycle begins? I mean, the natives do have oversized picnic table placemats. All the way from Lazonga, where they do the conga, is a new line of feminine hygiene products including Queen Kotex for when she's in one of her moods again. Now in banana scent. Despite this claim on the DVD cover, Queen Kong is actually more level-headed than most females. She doesn't destroy her picnic on purpose, it's just that ants got into the giant bowl of potato salad. Queen Kong entrances Ray via glowing monkey nipple seduction, but their flirtation is interrupted by a pterodactyl with an umbrella peg leg. Ray is eventually rescued, but the jealous queen isn't far behind. That gate was supposed to keep Kong inside? It was only built up to her belly button. Good thing gas bombs were smuggled aboard the liberated lady, because I doubt there's a hut somewhere full of bamboo laced with NyQuil. We'll take her back to London where she'll be the greatest attraction the world has ever known. She might have been a queen on this island, but in London half the guys you meet are queen. Complete with her own backup band, donning masks left over from the film somewhere near the vicinity of the Planet of the Apes, Queen Kong takes center stage as Ray mistakes his carriage for a porta potty. If Kong's chain brassiere comes off as a shocker, then there's another big surprise hidden under the seat of that thing. No chains can hold a liberated lady gorilla's lust, and Kong breaks free to reunite with Ray. No, I don't want to go! I want to go with her! I found the girl of my dreams! Big, big and strong with hair coming out of her nostrils! Concerned citizens of London are quick to notify authorities of the escaped ape, although calling from a payphone when the police station is just a block away seems like a waste of a perfectly good quid. I say, do you mean a gorilla or ape? I mean... If it's that size, it's probably an ape, not a gorilla. Yes, quite right. I think ape is definitely more accurate. Does it have any distinguishing characteristics? No, nothing. Except it does have rather long toenails. They are rather long, aren't they? Queenie exposes herself as one gassy gorilla when she belches her way through the streets of London and wipes out the city's supply of oil with a simian steamer of epic proportions. 
After being rescued from the hot and heavy clutches of his desirous director, Ray is swept away by Kong and they take off into the night. Come back! Don't be afraid, she won't hurt you! Just disregard the plane she crashed five minutes ago, though. With Ray in hand, Kong then takes the time to scale a postcard of Big Ben. Good God! Is that the time? Doesn't time fly when you're having fun? As news helicopters swarm the tower and jet fighters prepare to gun her down, Queenie releases Ray from her captivity so he can deliver a speech praising feminism. You cannot destroy her! For she represents all women everywhere! And successfully requests the assistance of emancipated women from all over the city to come help save Kong. These picket signs were put together awfully fast. I'm sure they're much appreciated and all, but this one could probably have been left at home. I guess everybody missed the scene when Queen Kong destroyed a plane full of people, because she and Ray are sent back to Lazanga without any consequences for her actions, leaving behind one envious film director. I wonder if they'd settle for a threesome. And without anything more to do, it's now time to perform the most popular pastime on the island of Lazanga, and that is to do the conga. Am I right? Unga bunga chumba wumba. Right. I like flying eeny weeny planes, itsy bitsy planes and grand planes, all kinds of planes. I like flying.